This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2099. Self-discovery is a kind of self-respect by Veronica Tugaleva of veronica.org. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Welcome back to our Sunday bonus episode where I share an article with you from a different podcast in our network to keep your life nice and optimized. Today's episode is coming from our very first podcast, Optimal Living Daily. You can find that show wherever you're listening to this. And please do follow or subscribe to the show to get new episodes every day. And with that, here's Justin with the post and commentary as we optimize your life. Self-discovery is a kind of self-respect by Veronica Tugaleva of veronica.org. Sometimes I don't realize how far I've come until I look back. I had one of those moments this week. A few days ago, I began to feel irritated while I was writing, so I got dressed and went on a walk just to air my head out, to think. No music, no podcasts, just my thoughts. Maybe that doesn't sound like a big accomplishment to you, but in my life, that's been a mind-blowing shift. I grew up in a family that would push, push, push me. I learned to push, push, push myself. I thought this was a superpower. Of course, I ignored all the things I couldn't do because I couldn't pull back. I realized that learning to walk away is so important. It sounds so simple, but it's not always easy in practice. I have a long history of misinterpreting my messages to myself. I had problems overeating. The more I ate, the more uncomfortable I'd feel. But eating was my emotional coping mechanism so I tried to eat away the discomfort of overeating. I couldn't walk away from a conversation. I couldn't emotionally detach. I felt like if I left, everything would fall apart. Oftentimes it was the other way around. I couldn't take breaks. If I felt irritated sitting at my computer, I'd take that irritation to mean work harder. I couldn't take time to myself. If I felt uncomfortable around people, I interpreted this to mean that I needed them to pay more attention to me. It's taken me a long time to realize that my body isn't always saying go or harder. Sometimes it's saying stop or slower. And sometimes I don't need people's attention. Sometimes I need to be alone. From my perspective now, this all seems obvious, but I honestly had no idea. No one taught me to look out for those messages. I was watching a documentary about babies the other day, and it talked about how important it is to respect a baby's control over his or her body. Kids don't just refuse food to be bad. Sometimes they don't like the taste. Sometimes they aren't hungry. Sometimes they have gastrointestinal issues. For parents to respect this, that rocked my world. Imagine respecting a one-year-old. That might just be the definition of enlightenment. But I am just such a one-year-old somewhere in there, and now I'm catching up on all that respect I never got. I don't blame my parents. They, like most people in the world, were never encouraged to learn the vocabulary of their own experience. It's my responsibility now. I'm my parent now. As I write a book about learning to self-communicate better, I'm learning to understand myself better. It is the most beautiful thing. My vision with the art of talking to yourself was to have it be like an onion. I wanted it to unravel, to be a journey of looking at the same thing from different angles, different views, expanding into a holistic understanding. Magically, the more it comes together like this, the more I become like this too. I'm growing with these words into them, from them. I'm learning from teaching. I am a mysterious creative force unfolding myself. I saw it written somewhere that the best way to learn something is to write a book about it. I remember when I first started writing this book, I felt like I was writing about something I was already practicing, like it was a reflection on something that had become an intimate part of my life. Maybe, I'm embarrassed to say, I thought I'd come to some kind of plateau with self-awareness. I've been humbled. There's nothing like self-expression, and that, I suppose, has been my greatest lesson. Writing is not a chore or responsibility. To me, it is a need. And just like my body whispered for me to slow down and my emotions whispered for me to walk away, so my creativity implores me to write. Sometimes I forget this. Sometimes I forget that something as simple as putting words on a paper can be as nourishing as a meal or a hug or a breath of air. I wrote a post a long time ago about how I kept trying to meditate, but in the end I realized I just needed to write. I remember I got some comments on the piece about how I obviously wasn't meditating correctly. At the time, this raised self-doubt in my mind. Now I know that writing is a kind of meditation. Maybe it isn't for everyone, but it is for me. It helps me detach from my ideas. It helps me be curious. It helps me heal. It helps me play. And walking away from writing is a kind of meditation too. Running, walking, singing. 
or just sitting quietly, letting myself listen to all the sounds around me. It's part of life, ebb and flow, rise and fall. And I'm going for the ride with my heart open. I have to admit that I felt stressed when I first started writing this book because I felt like I had to do it. I felt like the world needed to hear what I was saying, like this was the most important thing I could do right now. And yes, I still believe that. But the peace with which I am creating now has come from one beautiful realization. I need to write it too. Some cynics say there's no such thing as altruism, no such thing as a selfless act. And you know, maybe it's true. Maybe each time we do something that benefits others, we get something out of it too. It isn't just for other people. It's an act of love for everyone. I don't have to choose what's necessary over what feels good, it's the same thing. To tell you the truth, I think this book has been a bit like a child to me. I felt I got handed a huge responsibility in saying something important. And maybe I focused so much on the difficulty of my new role that I missed out on its beauty and magic. I can see more clearly now. To give the world what I need most is a gift. To feel that this is something I need to do is a gift. I couldn't feel more grateful. But what I am grateful for more than anything is my own curiosity for taking those dark and stormy pathways into my inner wilderness, for exploring beyond the brick walls, for taming my dragons, for caring enough about myself to wonder why I felt certain things instead of hating myself for not bending to my own will. We all deserve this kind of respect. We are all one-year-olds in some way, unable to communicate as well as we want to about the things we really need. All it takes is for the person in charge to be curious, to show us respect by wanting to discover us. How beautiful that we can all be these kinds of caregivers to ourselves. You just listened to the post titled Self-Discovery is a Kind of Self-Respect by Veronica Tugaleva of veronica.org. And thank you to Veronica. Come by veronica.org for a lot more. That's spelled V-I-R-O-N-I-K-A dot org. What she said about trying to meditate but needing to write instead, it's actually very familiar to me. I've had that happen for sure. Yes, you can always try to meditate through or just work through it when your mind is going in circles or really focused on working out something like things you need to do or an argument you had, some kind of inner conflict. You can meditate at any time, but those situations make it really, really difficult to feel happy about your meditation session. What will often happen is we'll be completely distracted because of the big cloud in our heads, all those thoughts. And in my experience, it really does help to do a sort of stream of consciousness type of writing. Specifically, one method a meditation teacher taught me back in college is to not allow yourself to lift up your pen or pencil, basically, and not stop writing at all. No editing or correcting, even if you know you misspelled something, no crossing out. Basically just putting all those thoughts in your brain on paper constantly, even if it's just writing, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to say over and over again. This is actually a really great way to get things out of your system if you need to. And if there's not someone around to listen, or if you really don't want someone to listen to a bunch of complaining, for example, it's worked really well for me, so something to try out. That'll do it for today. Have a great day, great weekend if you're listening in real time, and I'll see you tomorrow for Minimalist Monday, where your optimal life awaits.